Wow. Ako pala first. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you everybody for being here. Um, thank you so much for extending this invitation to me. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I'm so happy I made it. I flew in from Cebu a few hours ago. Um, I almost didn't make it, but here I am. So I'm really just so happy that I made it. Anyway, thank you so much. Pressure, ako yung una. Okay. Ah, sige. Okay, thank you. All right, everyone. I am happy to be with you today to celebrate the Global Youth Summit as Goodwill Ambassador of Joint United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS or UNAIDS, I am privileged to speak with you about sustainable development goals on good health and well-being, specifically on the ongoing disparities in the context of HIV and AIDS. I promise you this will be very interesting. The Philippines has still the fastest growing epidemic in Asia and the Pacific. From 2010 to 2022, there has been 419% increase in new infections. The country leads among the six neighboring countries in Asia and the Pacific with increasing trend of new infections against a global trend of decreasing new HIV infections. Ibig sabihin sa Pilipinas tumataas, globally bumababa. So that is really a problem. If this trend continues, there will be 401,700 people living with HIV by 2030. The HIV epidemic in the Philippines is mostly happening to us, to the youth. Cumulatively, since 1984, 80% of diagnosed cases were among those below 35 years old. That yun. Diagnosed HIV cases now are getting younger with the age shift from 35 to 49 years old in the beginning of the year 2000 to 25 to 34 years old since 2006. And based on new projections, by the end of 2023, 47% of estimated new infections will be coming from the age group of 15 to 24 years old. The Philippines has a concentrated epidemic, meaning the HIV infections are happening to certain groups of people such as males who have sex with males, transgender women, people who inject drugs, sex workers, and the young key populations. Sexual contact is predominantly the mode of transmission. Males who have sex with males, or MSMs, are disproportionately affected by HIV. In fact, eight out of 10 diagnosed cases are amongst males who have sex with males. And among MSMs, the younger groups are more vulnerable to HIV infection. You may wonder why new infections are mostly happening to young people. The fast changing sexual behavior among the young people coupled by a lack of correct information on HIV prevention and transmission, places the youth in more risks. On average, the youth are having sex at 16 years old, a year before they start using condoms, and two years before they get an HIV test. So there's what we call a condom lag, which is one year, and HIV testing lag, which is two years. These lags could be the window where the youth could be infected before they use a condom and could have continued having sex before they find out that they're infected. 
So this lag in testing access still happens even through the current HIV and AIDS Policy Act of 2018 um, that allows testing of 15 years old without parental consent. So other factors to consider in the HIV epidemic in the country is the emergence of orgies, sexual drug use or chemsex, transactional sex, and the use of virtual spaces Alam niyo to, <laughs> virtual spaces to find sexual partners, which are the realities um, that the youth may face when they become sexually active. And this is where the government and the youth organizations should develop specific and targeted approach in empowering the young people on how to navigate and negotiate these new, these new sexual realities. So in general, only 4 out of 10 men having sex with men or transgender women have correct knowledge on HIV prevention and its transmission. This is lower among the youth in the context of limited comprehensive sexual education in public and private learning institutions. And only 7 out of 10 of 15 to 17 year olds have access to condoms, yet only 3 out of 10 use it consistently. Awareness of the use of pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP among 15 to 17 years old is also lowest at only 7%. And 14 of those 18 to 24 years old are among MSMs, and TGW. Only 31% are aware of services provided by local social hygiene clinics. So speaking of uptake of PrEP services which can really effectively prevent um, HIV infection, a wide gap occurs on its availability between high burden sites and the rest of the country. The data shows that 98% of PrEP users in the country are found here in NCR, Regions 3 and 4A, and less than 2% for the rest of the country. The migration of the youth from areas with little to no information and access to HIV prevention to areas with a high um, burden of HIV for education and employment places them at a greater risk of, being, of getting infected. So this disparity in availability of HIV prevention commodities and clear local level programs in schools contribute to a scenario where the low burden HIV cities would now overtake the current high burden cities in the next five to six years. So, schools and social media present the country with an opportunity to reach the youth faster than ever before. Yet, gaps in the knowledge and access in HIV prevention points to disparity in the availability and quality of these approach across the country. Urban cities have more access to quality information compared to rural, rural areas. So all of these factors included, um, considered the domino effect on lack of knowledge on protective services, poor access to preventive commodities, and absence of protective behavior. These disparities in uh, coverage of HIV services are greatly affecting our youth. So according to the 2022 Youth Statistics Update, there are 31.4 million young people. 86% junior high schoolers are in public schools. 58% of senior high schoolers are in public schools. More than 4 million get a college education and more than 700,000 get technical vocational education and training. More than 85% of the youth has access to have access and use social media. 
So this kind of data shows that if we want to provide knowledge more effectively and change the behavior of the youth, the school and the social media platforms can be the st strategic entry points. So in summary, the Philippines is still the fastest growing epidemic in terms of the new HIV infection. In 2030, the estimated new infection will double the 2022 estimates and close to half of them will be less than 25 years old. Sexual contact remains to be the dominant mode of transmission with males having sex with males, contributing to almost all the sexual mode of transmission. The youth are not equipped to protect themselves against HIV. Knowledge on HIV remains to be very low and comprehensive sexual education is not yet mainstream in all learning institutions. Condom access has improved, yet only a few use it consistently due to the low knowledge of its protective value. And pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP services need to be scaled up nationwide and to reach more younger population. The emerging issues of sexualized drug use orgies, transactional sex, and easy to, use, easy to access uh, to the use of social media platforms add, to, add more to the complexity of these issues facing the youth as they explore their sexuality, gender identity, and expression. Comprehensive sexuality education as stipulated in the AIDS law shall be institutionalized in all schools. The strong presence of the youth in online platforms is an opportunity to have access to correct HIV-related information at their fingertips. What do we do to halt the HIV epidemic among young people? Okay. As I was going through this whole speech, I thought to myself already, I'm speaking to the youth right now. So, we have an understanding of what the problem really is, and it's the spread of HIV. I just want to make it clear that it's not your sexual orientation, or it's not because you're gay, or it's not because you have, you're have your male having sex with male. It's not that. I, in the past couple of months, I did a few impromptu interviews in different parts of the Philippines, in Bacolod, Boracay, and I learned that every time I tell somebody, especially when it's mas nakakatanda, like our elders, parents, hindi naman lahat, but a lot of them, when you show them these statistics, they will automatically, automatically go and say, ah, kaya dapat walang mga LGBT eh. Kaya dapat hindi ganyan, hindi ginagawa yan eh. That's not the problem. The problem here is to raise more awareness and to stop the spread of HIV. It's the HIV is the problem. Misinformation, lack of knowledge, lack of resources, that's the problem. It's not you, it's not your sexual orientation, it's not the, the LGBT community. And I just wanna, I know you already know this, but I just feel like I, I have to say that. Okay, so thank you. So again, what do we do to halt the HIV epidemic among young people? The country should implement solution to address the need for comprehensive sexual education in all learning institutions before the age of 16. The data doesn't lie. Kids these days are starting to do it at younger than 16 or maybe even younger. So we should start before the age of 16. Provide combination prevention services such as HIV information, condoms, lubes, and PrEP to all youth at risk of contracting HIV infections. HIV testing should also be offered and available to all consenting minors starting at 15 years old without any stigma 
and discrimination in all health facilities. All relevant government agencies should prioritize the order of the president to arrest the spread of HIV in the country, most especially among the youth. New interventions such as online presence of information on HIV and AIDS, tulad ng mga ginagawa namin, nila Catriona, wala kaming tigil, and virtual access to prevention commodities and services should be implemented but also scaled up. All government in all levels, especially at local government units, should have an HIV, HIV program that is well-funded and based on science and supported by local data. The meaningful participation of the youth should be emphasized in matters relating to their welfare. So I end with this quote. <laughs> The youth cannot use what they do not know and what they do not have and what they do not consent to do. Let's count them in and make their presence count. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, Ms. Pia, for that wonderful speech. It's not every day we get to talk about HIV, no? so it's nice that we have this platform. Now, before we continue on with our Q&A, may we request you to please go down on stage as well because we have another VIP from our SF family who will be joining us this afternoon as well. We'd like to acknowledge the presence of Miss Hannah Karina C.